So after some searching everywhere for what would be my next vehicle, I finally settled on the Dodge Ram Power Wagon. This is a 2500 series heavy duty. So that means that they basically remanufacture or kind of alter the engine for the 6.4 to be more of a power plant for trucks. It's got a ton of additional features for that engine specifically when it's made for trucks. And additionally, my biggest needs for a truck was a lot of utility. I needed to have my four wheel drive system have lockers. I've had lockers on my two or actually three Rubicons previous to, um, to this truck. And so for the last 12 years of my life, I've had lockers and I just wouldn't live without them now that I've had them. They make a world of difference in the off-road uh, arena. Open differentials kind of get you stuck more often than you'd imagine. Additionally, they come with the sway bar disconnect, digital um, or electronic, um, and it comes with the Warren 12,000 uh, pound synthetic cable winch. That's their Xeon series winch. And this all comes from factory like that. So this is absolutely stock as it comes from the factory. No lift has been done from factory. I believe you can fit 37s on the original wheels. I'll probably stick to these until they're dead and maybe go to 35s. We'll see. Uh, it depends on how and what I use it for. At the end of the day, I'll probably start doing some of the things I do in my Jeep in this truck because it is a lot more comfortable. You have the ability to adjust the, puddle, uh, the pedal distance. Um, you can just six-way adjustable driver and passenger seat with memory. You have your mirrors that can auto fold in and out so you can go through drive throughs which is great. These are also the tow mirrors. So these allow you to rotate the mirrors up so you can have your wider uh, view angles when you have trailers behind you. This is a four-door crew cab, but the center console in this vehicle does fold up. I would show you, but there's a dog on it. Atlas, get out there. Come on, get over there. And so this folds up so you can have a six passenger vehicle out of this thing, which is great. There's actually storage, back up little guy, underneath the seat there. And then in this console, there's additional storage, uh, three cup holders in the console. I did put a cover on this because my dogs always stand on the center console and I didn't want them to ruin it. This is the tier two package. So it comes with uh, a little bit bigger infotainment center, uh, the sunroof, moonroof, the power sliding rear window. So those things are really handy when you have a big truck. Additionally, this has all the lane sense and all of the features that give you the ability to detect um, cameras around you so you can actually back into place so you get that aerial 360 view. Fantastic when you start in the world of big trucks like me. I've always had smaller vehicles like Jeeps. So driving this thing around is actually really weird because it's just so damn big. Um, so those features were a must for me. I didn't want to bump into anyone. I didn't want to ruin anything. So getting that tier two package was a number one criteria for me within this truck series. Um, and then naturally it just comes with all of the other, uh, the hardware stuff that kind of gives you those higher end features like the locking differentials. This has 410 gears front and rear, obviously. Um, and then the cooler options that you can get with the power wagons. These are people have a, a lot of opinions about whether they love them or hate them. I love them. Uh, Ram boxes are a locking box series that's over the bed of your truck. This basically just takes the space where the wheel well would normally come into the bed and they just take that negative space square off the bed. This still fits four foot wide by six and a quarter feet deep with the bed flattened down. You can obviously fit a little bit longer so you can still fit dimensional things like plywood and sheetrock in the bed. These locks are actuated by the key fob so they lock automatically with the truck. They open up and they have an enormous amount of space inside these things. They also have drain outs inside them which give you the ability to put ice or liquids in these if you wanted to. Uh, so if you were transporting some ice and you wanted some cold drinks on your beach day you could do that. These are lit which is really handy. Uh, this is if you decide to take little tiny people and stuff them in here they can escape so be mindful they have an escape hatch. Um, they also have a 400 watt AC 110 or 115 uh, volt receptacle in there so you can put you know plug in anything you want like your air compressor or whatever it might be that you're that you're using um and that's the ram box i like those because i'm not going to utilize the upper area of the bed as much and for me it was more important to have utilitarian storage this truck is absolutely amazing at that it has a ton of really cool storage spaces not only those two there um, in the center console, but you also get two glove boxes on the passenger side and underneath, and Atlas is sleeping on his new bed, 
So the back seat's really cool. This is a 60-40 split. These fold up. These are also ventilated heated seats, which is great. They have under seat lights, which is really great for visual, uh, for being able to see in the back seats. But as you fold up the back seats, these little things fold out and they make a flat surface, which is what I did to the Jeep um, to make it dog friendly for transport. So this is, oh, push the garage button. Uh, so this is super handy for that, but I was wanting it to be a little bit softer so the dogs wouldn't have such a hard surface and they wanted to lift it. So I bought a uh, three inch memory foam king size mattress, cut it in half so it's two twins. And so you could do this with a twin six inch, I just couldn't find one. And this is almost exactly, it squishes in. So you probably lose two inches on the inbound side here and about six inches in total, three on each side when you compress the mattress in with the doors. But it's a twin mattress in the back. It's a flat surface. So if you ever had to sleep over in your vehicle, which I've now done in this once, which is great because I drove it home from Texas to get it. Um, but these little legs fold up underneath these little flaps. And if you lift up your carpeting in the back, you have these extra containers, which you can fit a ton of stuff in. These are inside removable um, bins inside of it. And this has just the winch controller and the receiver um, coupling so you can down, uh, take it down a size. They do sell from Mopar locks for these as well, which is pretty cool. I need to order the floor mats that are rubberized so that I don't keep tracking dirt into the truck because I've got to keep it clean huge pockets in the door you could put tons of stuff in here the driver and passenger on the front side have them as well these originally came with foam inserts that hold uh, another cup holder which is great i just reordered those along with this those come tomorrow this is just a console cover uh, generic amazon kind of thing that you'd normally get some things that it doesn't come with which are really weird is because they all come with a matched key on the RAM boxes that come in the key fob. So your key fob itself will allow you to, you can actually pull the key fob apart. This top end comes out and it's the key. So you could open the door with it. You could unlock the RAM boxes or this, which is the only key slot in the vehicle that doesn't have automatic functionality, which makes sense because it's not plugged into anything. That's your bed divider. And it's really interesting, this feature, because, um, and actually I'll show you another feature when we get up there. So this little kick out here gives you a little step. So grandpas like me can get into the truck nice and easily without having to haul myself in. This has a rotation release, which then lets these arms fold out. And you can see those little end bits that are rubberized recess from their holding spot. And you can see how that mechanizes if you look down from the top, how it just pushes itself out. This is really cool. I just did propane the other day. Uh, I refilled the tanks and um, in like, not this spot, but the third one there, it's a nice pin the propane in place spot. And then you can use the lock to pin it in place. This, however, was designed by Mopar because they love to make everything kind of wild to be your bed extender. And so it needs to set here and here. And I left this undone. I just got the hardware for it, but that gives you the extension of the bed. What they don't supply is these pieces of hardware. It's pre-threaded. Once you remove these little plastic caps, it's a threaded hole inside and you get these little inset pieces. This one rotates, so I can't really screw it in because it won't really work that way. But once it's in there, once it's vertical like this, you just rotate it and it locks it in place and holds this bed extender in. These are not interfering with the tailgate. The tailgate will shut and be flush here, and those don't interfere with anything in the four foot dimensional bed. So I can leave those in permanently, and those will allow me to have a bed, like kind of an extension, uh, and utilizing the tailgate as a little bit more real estate for hauling stuff around with using the same bed divider in another application. Really wish that they had thought to add those to the vehicle when you're buying a vehicle like this. You would kind of hope they would want to add that type of feature, but, they added the feature, they just didn't give you the hardware to do it. So then it's up to the owner to order them. Uh, Mopar does sell those parts, um, but you can just buy them on Amazon because tons of third-party manufacturers make these little things. Um, 
I think these are $22 for the set of four. And it has the, the little lock tight on the actual threaded end of it. So you can see once you've threaded it in, it'll compress these little washer gaskets. Uh, and then it will hit that thread lock and hold itself in place. When you do remove these, depending on the climate you're in, this truck came from Texas and the sun out there is terribly hot. So these became very brittle and broke but um, just have some pliers handy and to pull out the little extra piece that was what I put in there. And that will allow you to nicely have your bed extension. Even has the little Ram logo on the back because why wouldn't they? These um, trucks do have a known common flaw, which is in the Ram boxes themselves. The locking mechanism is actually really powerful. And actually I didn't even screw that one in all the way. You can see it was just in there a couple days ago. So I just got this thing and uh, I took these three screws off and then these two little set screws. This will not come completely off. It is still attached to the hardware inside there. But one of the little elbows that allows the actuator to unlock and lock this uh, with electronics, it broke that because that plastic on those little lock mechanisms gets really brittle in the heat. And these are obviously black on the top and in the sun all day. So it just got brittle and snapped one because of the force inside the Ram box was a little bit too much and snapped it. The part is, I got it at my local dealer for eight bucks, but you can get them for usually like three or four bucks. It maybe took three to four minutes to replace. Uh, there's a bunch of videos online on how to do that. Super easy, but that's the only thing that was like air quotes broken on the truck when I bought it. Uh, otherwise, this thing is freaking fantastic. It has every single bell and whistle I could ever want. It fits all the dogs and all the passengers I could ever need. Uh, these are those two glove boxes. I love chamois, so I always have them because there's always a doggy mess to be cleaned. Uh, secondary glove box down below. And so this is the new addition to the fleet of four-wheel drive vehicles. The Jeep is uh, undergoing major surgery. I had a rear axle seal bearing assembly bust out and I actually ordered those parts about a year ago because I started to get a little tiny leak out of it. Finally gave out completely um, and then it started leaking and I realized, well, I need new tires. You can clearly see on that tire on the passenger side over there, it's really warm. So I need new tires, I needed a bearing assembly. I'm gonna disassemble the entire diff there to obviously take out the axle shafts. Might as well check to see the wear on the differential and see if it might be time to upgrade to 488s. Uh, I've been running uh, 373s for about 60,000 miles on these 37s and obviously uh, it has not had a single problem. I've not seen any filings come out when I do my differential service or anything like that. Most of the folks that have those problems are not recalibrating the vehicle to the actual size of the tire. It's a problem that happens with these trucks actually too, and I'll get into that in a second. But I need to do diff service on both ends of this thing. I needed to do a little bit of work on the brakes. I need to do new pads onto it and some other stuff. So little Rubicon project. The Jeep camper has been parked for a hot minute. I've got it in the garage. I'm just going to disassemble it, but I needed time to do that project because... I work full time and I needed to be able to uh, basically take some time and get all of my duckies in a row to do that. It's also at 140,000 miles, so I figured I needed a farm truck. I needed something that could tow my tractor. I need something that I can move materials around in, and I wanted a truck. And I was ripe for a new vehicle, so this is what I landed on. Um, the tuning of the transmission to know the wheel size is important imperative in modern vehicles. There are so many people that have problems with these and specifically the Jeeps. People always put big tires on Jeeps, but most of them don't realize that you have to tell the transmission control unit and the computer system that the tires have changed in size. The shift points on the vehicle change dramatically depending on the size of the tire. And if you don't allow the transmission to shift at the right time, you're going to put undue wear on the transmission and that's the last thing you want to do my transmission in that jeep has uh has had 35s on it um for the last well from 60 to 90,000, so 40,000 miles and then roughly about that or maybe it's like 30,000 miles of 35s and then uh about 50,000 plus miles of 37s on it so this has had zero slip that transmission has been super strong this is a 2013 with 140 i think 7,000 miles on it so this thing is bulletproof, but 
I calibrated the transmission. And that's something where I think a lot of people make that mistake. So if you get a vehicle that you can lift and put tires on, make sure you recalibrate those shift points for your transmission by allowing your vehicle to know the tire size. There's an outstanding application if you're on the Dodge and or Chrysler platform series like the, the Rams or the Jeeps known as J-Scan. I've done a video about it before. It is the must have application for uh, for anyone who does their DIY vehicle stuff. But uh, needless to say, this is the newest toy in the collection. Absolutely in love with it. It is the smoothest riding vehicle I have ever driven. Gas mileage is atrocious. The engine is more powerful than anything I've ever driven. And it is basically just brand new. Um, to me, it's as new as a vehicle I'll ever get. I don't really do new. I do slightly used as as close as I'll ever get. So if you want to know more about the Power Wagon and or the Jeep Adventures, stay tuned. There'll be plenty more once I dig into the Jeep so we can see how those diffs are doing. Been a hot minute since I did content. I've had the Jeep parked. I've had the, the truck on a hunt for about a month. I've been looking for this thing. I found it and uh, bought a one-way ticket to Texas and drove it home in a 24-hour period, or about 26-hour period. Um, so it has been a whirlwind of stuff going on here and obviously maintaining the farm, the bees and everything else and working a full-time job. So uh, bear with me on the latency in the content. I will make sure I try and do it a little bit better job and I'll go into some more details about some of these accessories that I've bought for the truck um, as I've kind of tried them out. So that center console cover, I just got that. Hopefully my dog Titan won't tear this up too terribly, but this is the exact same one that I have on my Jeep and it's held up for about two and a half years. They stopped selling it for the Jeep in that diamond stitched, which I really hate. Um, so I actually put this little cover over it, but you can see it under, under there. It's all worn out because he steps on it, uh, stands on the center console while I drive because he loves to look out the windshield. So I'll probably order a second one of those, but it'll just wear out based on the fact that my dog is, you know, always running around with his sharp claws. Probably gonna get a tonneau cover on this thing. Um, and then uh, we'll see all the other accessories that come along with it. Although it is fairly well accessorized from the factory. One of the cool things, as if you followed the channel, you probably know that I have, I think, about six cameras on this Jeep here. So I can see under the vehicle, around the tires. This has more cameras than that vehicle does that I customized. It additionally has an ability to wire two more um, cameras in through the trailer hitch plug series so that you can actually use cameras on your trailer when backing, which is freaking awesome. It makes it so much easier to move things around when you have great visibility. So again, that was part of my criteria in buying this truck is I needed that, that uh, technology package that allowed me to see and keep the vehicle safe uh, because I'm new to giant vehicles and I want to make sure I don't run into stuff with this thing. It's bright red, so hopefully no one runs into me, but um, that's the latest update on vehicle and why I went with Dodge Ram. If you have any questions or comments or concerns or whatever it might be, put those down in the comments. I'll try and get my uh, best efforts to get some responses to you. Sorry about the ramble and the uh, digression into other areas while videos, but it's been a while, so I had to catch up on all of the stuff. And uh, stay tuned, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.